you can um, share the way you feel more comfortable if you want to share screen if you want to um, go with the with the reading if you want to share some images how you feel the the facilitation is is, is the best cool um i think i'm gonna share my screen then Um, all right. Can you see it? Yeah. Cool. So, um, this chapter is going to talk about identifying and expressing feelings. Um, I thought this chapter was really cool and I learned a lot from it. And I'm gonna, I want to share some of my, my personal thoughts around it as well. And any time that you have, um, that you think about something, you can also kind of jump in and, you know, we can do it together. Um, okay. I don't know if... I watched this one too, like, I think there's a chapter, so I always really want to listen. So I found that from the last. Okay. Cool. Um. Alright. So, I highlight some things that I thought it was interesting. So here, um, basically, it's gonna say about, um, how we're gonna express our feelings in a truth way that's not um, expressing our thoughts or our judgments around what other people are talking about and that we think that they think about us. So um, it first start with this that I thought it was really interesting um, to like remind us of everything that um, we've been learning in this book. So the first component of, of NVC is to observe without evaluating. And the second component is to express how we're feeling. Um, cool. So the heavy cause of expressed feelings. Um, I think over here, um, it was very meaningful for me that, like, when we don't express our feelings, we feel, we feel that we are not, um, we don't feel good, we don't feel relieved, and we feel kind of sad, and we feel bad, and it's gonna show us, like, the better ways to do it. So, feelings are simply not considered important. And here I put like a note about kids' feelings that I think for kids it's very um, it's very difficult for them to express what they're feeling. And we know it in general that Kids has very hard time um, expressing what they feel, what they feeling, and usually um, we kind of act like kids in this way because we don't really express what we are feeling, and we are always telling the kids that they need to learn, and sometimes they are violent when they don't express what they really want or they need and um, for my psychology kind of view um, it's always like the kid has a problem and usually the parents doesn't know how to deal with it and when we when we grow 
we kind of we figure it out that it's not just like a kid's problem and we weren't taught how to deal with our own feelings and it came like a big snowball that like never ends and we learn to be up in our head wondering what's in the others think is right for me to say or do so we don't know how to, how to express our feelings and consequence of that we don't know how the other person is feeling so we are always wondering what's going on in other people's mind and it doesn't help the relationship itself and uh, I, I want to also say that something that I have seen in my experience of not expressing feelings um, is that um, then you carry resentment because um, like you had a feeling and, and like, you didn't express it and then like you don't express it in a good way but you express it with anger when you explode and like yes. accumulating those feelings that it, it's better to 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 be able to communicate them um, pro, um like in an in a good way when they arise and also to process them it's not just like um not just like um storing that things within you but um like um being mindful of of that everything that happens inside you is is important for you to interact with 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 um the reality that is causing it yeah yeah agreed um so here I put like a note why it says do we know how to act when we are wondering what's going on on when there's something missing like if we are in a relationship any kind of relationship really um, we don't know what's going on with the other person but we know something's going on and like we are missing that but we don't know how to come and talk and we don't know how to express our feelings and maybe um, to know that something's going on and you don't really know um, it kind of gets you frustrated so it, I think I think this chapter um, helps us a lot to see it and to help ourselves and also try to help other people. And so here I put like, should I just say that I think it's going on, like, or is there a better way to say like, should I? Is it my place to say what's going on with the other person? Do I really know about it? Or maybe it's not even something's going on. It's my impression of it. Or like what's the best way to do it? And he keeps going. And he says that um, when he was in school, he had like a bad time um, trying to express his feelings. And he didn't um, want to meet um, the boys that were waiting for him outside. And he kind of hid himself. And the teacher um, saw him um, hitting himself. And she said that big boys don't get fright trained. Um, that's like same thing that we always hear that like boys don't cry. So it's like, what is that? that we cannot express our feelings. Um, and he comes and he explained that um, is a typical, it was typical for coaches to value athletes willing to give their all and continue playing no matter how much physical pain they were in. I learned, and then he said that I learned the lesson so well I once continued playing baseball for a month with an untreated broken wrist. So like, 
it comes in real pain and it's like it it becomes like a big problem when you don't know how to express yourself and sometimes even the environment doesn't allow you to express yourself and express your feelings because they are always they always want more from you and more that you cannot even be a person anymore that you have to give your all and you cannot feel anything basically um and then he goes to like a workshop um and he has a, a lot of um examples of his experience about in the NBC. Um, in here, what I got here it, in this part is that like sometimes um, we are not ex really expressing our feelings but our opinion of something. So here it was like a, a guy, a boy that came to him and it was saying that um, that he his roommate was playing music very loud, and he said that I feel that isn't right to play music so loud at night. But he didn't really express his feelings. He was kind of judging it and giving his opinion about it. So at the end, he didn't know how to express his feeling. And he thought and that like he didn't know what his feelings really were because it's a thing that like we don't learn um, in our family, we don't learn in our school and as we grow it becomes a real problem because we don't know how to express our feelings. So What's an opinion and what's a feeling? Yeah, I, I, I also wanted to comment on this. I think this is super important and this is something that Durga has mentioned a lot, like the words end, ended in ED, that end in ED, mo sometimes um, they are not feelings. They are like judgment um, disguised as, as feelings. And I think that... Um, the way um, of understanding feelings is when um, you take full responsibility um, of, 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 of that feeling and you don't um, um, like um, give responsibility um, of your feelings to others. Because when you say like, I feel that you are, you, you are using the word feel to say like, I think. But um, mm -hmm. you, uh, but you are like um, some somehow yeah judging the other. But um, when when you have feeling, it's something that it's a hundred percent within within yourself, and and it doesn't and, and you assume the responsibility of that without um, yeah with, without making the other um, guilty or, or or responsible for 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 that. So like. You, you can be happy um, because of someone doing something, but um, but uh, you 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 cannot um, like and 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 this is this is very very complex. But um, you you cannot say like um, y y you are um, making me feel. Um, happy because um, like you are yeah, giving you... the other the, res the responsibility of your feelings but um, mm -hmm. you are the only one who is um, like responsible for them so like you are happy because of something happened but not be but it's not the other one that that um, is making you um, happy you because happiness is something that we feel um, and it w within ourselves and it's not something that other can make us feel. Yes, yes, beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's like the way that we feel, it's not anyone's responsibility but ourselves. 
um, and he even says over here the difficulty is in identifying and expressing feelings is common so it is a common thing to don't know um, the feeling that we are really feeling like what's going on um, so I have I have an example in my own life with um, in my ex exchange program that I wasn't feeling very good because of the way that the other person was was talking to me and then I came to this person and I said like hey um, so you should you should just um, talk to me nicely and in his mind he was being nice but I was I was feeling um, bad because of like the impression that I had of um, what he was like the way that he was talking to me and he came to me and he was like look I'm not responsible for the way that you feel if I'm being direct to you and I got that and I was like it was very, very insightful for me I was like that's true like he's just being direct to me and honest and I was feeling insecure because he was being direct because I was not used to that um, and it's a very common thing in families as well and here he even says like for families the toll is severe when members are unable to communicate emotions um, like I said before about kids um, I've seen a lot of parents um, talking to their kids like um, be quiet, shut up, go to your room and like trying to enable the kids to feel emotions and when the kids were frustrated or sad or like not feeling hurt um, somehow the family kind of shut down those emotions and and then the kid get kind of confused about it because he is feeling something but no one is really listening to that um, so it's also common in families and I would say pretty much in never every um, relationship that we have because it's something that we are really not used to um, to have our feelings kind of heard um, so here I put a note like how hard natural environments are on us um, because like family environment is supposed to be natural but sometimes um, even families and relatives are very toxic so even those environments that are supposed to be natural they're very hard um, on their kids on their partners and it just become a thing that goes outside and like people express it outside the house and like outside their home because it goes and reflects on their relationship with their um, in their work, in like, if they go to the supermarket, if like going to the gym, it just reflects every in like every other environment. Um, so here he says that like he regular, regularly hears things like, "I wouldn't want you to get to the wrong idea. I'm married to a wonderful man." But I never know what he is feeling. And another example, I feel like I'm married to a wall. So it's not her feelings, it's like her judgment and her impression about how her husband is acting like um, in a relationship with her. Um, and it happens a lot with relationships with a boss as well because then like you don't know what he's feeling and he doesn't know what you're feeling and then 
it just became the thing that like you're judging him, he's judging you. Um, I I also um liked a lot um this highlight that you have um that it says like when um someone is hurt, he's um discouraged and doesn't respond, so thereby um confirms um your your judgment of the person so like if 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 someone is is telling you like you are married you you are a wall like um what wh what that triggers on you is, is is to maybe not say anything and and oh, and and that then like confirms what the initial person was saying and it doesn't like cut the 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 unwanted behavior and um this is something that um it happened to me um some weeks ago because um yeah um i i, I was um having some arguments around um house chores and and um like i i i i was feeling that um there were um some like um wrong communication on the way we were um discussing this and trying to apply this um nonviolent communication i tried to, to to make it um as clear as possible like exactly in what chores um do you want more help with and um that way we we didn't talk um general generally about um things that we don't do but we started like going into the grain uh, into what are the changes that we can have in our behavior so so yeah it's 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 it, what i think that it's important about this is to take the a signal and some noise that can be done um and try to see what is what is the real message that is behind it and um uh, a good tool that um, I think N NBC tells us is to be like is it, to to try to um, only talk about facts, and it's not like hey you don't help me with the cho chores of the house. That's that's a somehow uh, so, somehow a judgment, but um, saying like hey can can you please um, I don't know um, make the bed after. Um, after you you wake up, that's something more punctual that um, and that um, triggers and motivates and uh, uh, an action that that actually um, transform the initial situation. Yeah, agreed. Um, I think I did like a highlight over that about that more at the end, but it's something like when we are really honest with ourselves, with our feelings and we can be honest to the other person um it just makes the communication easier because then um the other person really knows um what your expectations are and like how are you f really feeling and it's also something that's very hard like after i read this chapter um and at the end um he gave us some words that we can use when we want to express our feelings and i'm trying to to really do that and then sometimes i even caught myself trying to um express a thought but using my feelings words and it's it is hard to do that because we're kind of used to like yeah, it's, not a, it. It, it's hard and it's an everyday practice because like um we get mad and at that moment our mind becomes a crazy horse and we start like saying a lot of things but we have to always try to stay on top of, of our mind that's true and then as he said before like trying to separate your opinion from your real feeling and it is something very hard to do um and here like after she said that um she's married to a wall then her husband starts to act like a wall and then um he tries to help her 
and he says, It sounds to me like you're feeling lonely and wanting more emotion and emotional contact with your husband. And then she agreed. Um, and it's, it's just better. It, I mean, her husband didn't know exactly what she was feeling. And then now that she, um, he tries to help her expressing her feelings, her husband understand why she thought she was married to a wall and because like it's it's hard to understand like if when you just say i'm married to a wall like what is a wall really so now he understands more and they start to connect with their feeling and um the husband, for example, hears himself criticized for behaving like a wall. He's hurt and discouraged and doesn't respond. So it doesn't help their relationship to give her opinion like that. The benefits of straightening our feelings and vocabulary are evident not only in intimate relationship but also in a professional world. Um, encourage. So um, here he says about like a corporation that he was working, and then um, he has, he says like encourage them to express more of their humanness in their communication with co-workers. So like we put more of our human being side when we express our feelings in a right way and it gets better results at the end uh, and here he's starting to to say another example that workings um workers of the admin administrator uh, sorry um the administrators of the hospital, they were anxious about forthcoming meeting with the hospital's physicians um, because they were kind of for training about going there and express their feelings and they voted no to a project that the administrators wanted to put in practice because they didn't know how to come and really express themselves. So he tried to help them. Um, and when he says, so then they do like a role playing session and he says, I'm feeling frightened to be bringing up this issue. And then they don't like, the administrators don't like the way that he says it because um, they think it's not the right way to express their feelings like that because then the, the doctors are not going to like it. But then they get, they kind of get over it and they do it and they express it. Um... And they, at the end, they have like a good results because they express their feelings and then the doctors could really understand why they were feeling like that. And he says, I have often heard people say how they cannot imagine ever expressing feelings at their workplace. And then it makes me think like how toxic workplaces can be that you you're always afraid to express your feelings because you don't know how the other person response will be and i i i want to comment on on this capsule that it says um expressing our vulnerability can help us resolve conflict 
Yeah, that, mm -hmm. that, that's something um, that I have seen a lot and I think it's key for resolving conflict. Sometimes when we are mad to the other person or when a conflict arises, um, what um, like initially jumps is that um, the other uh, part has no vulnerability and somehow is vulnerating you. But when you understand sometimes the other part, you can, you can understand that why are they doing that? And um, yeah, I, I think that opening the space to be vulnerable um, also promotes um, an authentic self and, and, and not an image of a false persona who, is, who has not feelings at all. But like um, expressing our, our vulnerabilities um, makes us human and breaks that ice that that sometimes um, yeah we um, that that and breaks that taboo that says that that expressing feeling is not good and and yeah when 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 you understand the vulnerability of the other then you are also able to to be more empathic. Because um, yeah, when 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 we choose chose to not be um, um, vulnerable, um, it's very difficult to connect with the other. Yeah, I totally agree. It's yeah, as you said, it's very important to show to the other person that we are vulnerable as well, and and then it kind of builds a safe place where you can both talk about your feelings. And it's not a bad thing. Um, oh, here's what I, I said before, that like, being honest with others, it's good. And also being honest with yourself. And people will help you more if they know how you are really feeling. Because they don't have a magical powers to read your mind. That's like what sometimes we expect and especially in romantic relationships that we are um, sometimes frustrated because the other person didn't pick up what we want but we never really said anything um, so like no one has magical powers to know how you're feeling so if you don't go and open um, yourself Maybe the other person is not going to open as well, and it doesn't help their relationship to improve. Um, and here, he he was uh, um, talking about another example that he went to to a school um, to talk about NVC, and then he was um, he was being weird um, during his presentation because he wasn't feeling that they were accepting him and they were understanding him so then um, someone came up and asked him if he hated black people because he was being weird about it um, and then he realized how he was contributed to the student's perception by trying to hide his discomfort. So no one at, like was paying attention on him really when he was being um, discomfort in his presentation. And then he opened himself for the students and he said, I'm feeling nervous. Um, not because you're black, my feelings have to do with my not knowing anyone here and wanting to be accepted when I came to the room. And this expression of his vulnerability had a pr pronounced effect on his students. They started to ask questions about him, um, to tell him things about themselves and to express curiosi curiosity about NBC. So at the end, it was um, it was good that he expressed his real feelings and and told them that he was also vulnerable 
and at the end they were having a good relationship and I can see that happening a lot in a school environment um, that sometimes the teacher doesn't feel comfortable and then no one really pays attention about what he's talking about um, and here he's trying he started to say and discuss about feelings versus non-feelings so what is real feeling what is not like how can you express that you're feeling something and how to understand that it's not a feeling um and he says a common confusion generated by the english language is to oh is our use of the word feel without actually expressing a feeling i i have actually one criticism to to the way that um paragraph if is written is because i think it, not only in english like um in spanish you can make the same mistake and i think like in most languages we we can um we tend to make th those mistakes that um we use the verb like feel um and that in spanish it would be like uh, yo siento que tú or mm -hmm. siento que ella or yo siento and and we cannot feel the the, the other we can only feel ourselves yeah I think he said English because it's his language, but I can see that in other languages as well. My first language is Portuguese, and I can see that happening in Portuguese too, where people put their opinions and like they they put it on the others and doesn't get responsibility of their own feeling. Um, and here is kind of like um, a way that you can try to pick if that's a real feeling or it's a thought. So, if it comes with um, words like that, like, as with, um, you can see that it's not really a feeling and it's a thought. Like, I feel that you should know better. So it's not your feeling, really. It's your thought and something that you believe in kind of that this person should know better I feel like a failure it's not like a feeling it's it's your thought um, and here the example of the wife I feel as if I'm living with a wall um, it's your thought is your opinion it's like your judgment it's not your feeling your feeling would be like I feel, even like, I feel failure, it's your feeling. Um, you feel unhappy, you feel frustrated. And here, when it comes to with pronouns, I, you, he, she, they, yet, I feel I am constantly on call. I feel it is useless. So when it comes like with a pronoun after, it's like an indicator, it's not a feeling, it's a thought. It's like your opinion. And it comes with names or none referring to people as well. Um, I feel my boss is being manipulative. I'm sorry, my dog is barking. <laughs> Don't worry, you're doing great. Um, and here he also says, like, um, distinguish between what we feel and what we think we are. So, um, just a moment, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, it didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> um, so in NVC, we distinguish words that express actual feelings and those that describe what we think we are. 
Um, so it's like some ways that we can uh, try to understand if it's an actual feeling or not. So I feel inadequate as a guitar player. In this statement, I'm being assessing my ability as a guitar player rather than really express my feelings. So here he will express his feelings. I feel disappointed in myself as a guitar player. So he's naming the feeling. Um, I feel impatient. I feel frustrated with myself as a guitar player. It's very interesting how um, we can learn how to name our feelings. Yeah. Um, I feel ignored. Um, this part was um, very meaningful for me to understand why I feel ignored. It's not really a feeling. This is more of an interpretation of the actions of others rather than a clear statement of how we are feeling. And I kind of make a question for everyone, like, how could we say that? To be a feeling, to express the feeling. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree on what he says, like, I, fe I feel hurt, I feel hurt. Mm -hmm. But um, also, um, you can say, like, um... Because, like, we think that feeling ignored, it's like a real feeling. But it's the other person that's ignoring you, so it's not on you, really. But then you can feel sad, you can feel hurt, you can feel discouraged. Affected. Affected. Uh, words like ignored express how we interpret others, rather than how we feel. Here's um simplifying of such words so i really like this that he puts like words that we can um kind of use and understand better our own feelings and here he tries to help us build vocabulary for feelings um and this is interesting words such as good and bad prevent the listen listener from connecting easily with what we might actually be feeling. Um, I thought that was interesting because good and bad, it's very, it can have a lot of interpre interpretations and sometimes um, it's not really what we want. Um, how we are likely to feel when our needs are being met. So, it's like a list, oh, list, list of words that we can use. Um, I feel glad, I feel secure, I feel calm, I feel cool, I feel hopeful. Um, I feel loving, I feel je um, joyful, I think it's really um, nice that he gave us these words because it is hard to, to know um, ab more about our own feelings and then after we read the chapter we are like Oh my god, so like, how can I really express that? So he kind of gave us a list. And here is like, uh, when our needs are not being met. So I can feel intense, I can feel afraid, I can feel angry, I can feel mean, um, I feel exhausted, I feel 
depressed, I feel hurt, I feel sad, I feel nervous. And at the end, um, to summarize, um, I think this was really interesting as well. By developing a vocabulary of feelings that allow us to clearly and specifically name or identify our emotions. We can connect more easily with one another. And NVC distinguishes the expression of actual feeling from words and statements that describe thoughts, assessments, and interpretations. And he gave us some an exercise in in these sentences like we can understand better if they are expressing their feelings or not. So I don't know if you wanna do the exercise with everyone or like everyone do their own kind of and that was it. Thanks, Bianca. It, it was a, a great facilitation and uh, also a great chapter. Um, what, what I get from, from this chapter is how hard it is to actually practice this and how unconscious um, we um, make mistakes um, in our daily communication. Yeah. And I think also when we understand more feelings, we can help other people to understand their own feelings. And especially when we are listening to a conflict and they're just um, talking about um, what makes them sad. And then when we name their feelings for them, they can understand better why the conflict is happening. Yeah, and also um, now that we are reaching to the top of the hour, I also want to say um, that I will be taking uh, chapter number five for next week. And also I will um, continue inviting more people to come. Maybe I, I think that today people was a little bit distracted by other calls. But um, yeah, I will continue inviting people to, co to come to this because I... Um, and by every, every week that passes, I am m more happy to have started this this book club and um, how how much are we learning um, to co about communication? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, Septi. Thanks, Bianca, and see you next week. <laughs>